Am I the asshole for giving my siblings their family home? Mistake with the title. Am I the asshole for not giving my siblings their family home? Throwaway account. I, 35 female. Am my parents only child together, but they had children with others. My dad had two kids with his first wife, Billy, 40 male, and Jane, 45 female. And my mom had my sister, Angel, 46 female, with someone else. Billy and Jane's mom had passed two years prior to our dad even meeting my mom but they hated my mom anyway. She tried for years to get on Billy and Jane's good side, giving them space, and trying to bond but they never took to it. They were even mean to Angel and eventually my mom had enough and divorced my dad. The house in question originally belonged to Billy and Jane's mom as she inherited it from a relative and because there was no will my dad owned it outright after her passing. My mom had a shark of a lawyer and she got it in the divorce. Billy and Jane did not take it well because that was the only home they ever knew but my mom no longer cared after the way they treated Angel. My dad had to move into an apartment in another school district but my mom allowed him to use her address so Billy and Jane could stay in the same school district, but still resented her. And my dad tried to petition the courts for 50-50 but it didn't last long when Jane cut my hair and Billy pulled apart my favorite doll. My mom told the school about the change in address and went back to get full custody of me. By the following year they had to switch schools and lost nearly all of their extracurricular activities because my dad couldn't afford it after the child support. They demonized my mom for this and because of that I rarely went to any gatherings on my paternal side because I didn't like how they spoke about my mom or Angel. When my dad got sick my mom let him stay with her but banned Billy and Jane from entering the house because she didn't trust them and when he died I ended up receiving 50% of his assets while Billy and Jane got 25% each. My mom passed away and Billy and Jane did not hide their joy in the matter. They literally held a party and posted it all over social media knowing and or just not caring that I would see it. So when they approached me about signing over the house to them I told them, no, and now I'm being called the asshole because it was originally their mom's house. I'm still pretty bitter about how happy they were about my mom passing as well as their treatment of me growing up so my judgment is clouded. Am I the asshole? Edit. Because someone already brought this up the current value of the house is at least $700,000 and they want me to give it to them for free. I am the sole owner of the house. My mom did leave Angel something but I don't want to go into too much detail about it in case someone I know in real life recognizes the story. Just know that it was enough that Angel isn't kicking a fuss over not getting the house. Edit 2. I don't know all the details because I was a toddler at the time but Billy and Jane were horrible to Angel but the straw that broke the camel's back for my mom is when they secretly fed Angel something that she was allergic to as a prank. After that she spent a year planning the divorce before actually serving my dad. Not the asshole. They sound horrible. And get yourself a shark of a lawyer if they make any legal claims. Not the asshole. For the party alone you are justified in not even talking to them, much less turning over the house to them. As much as they may not like it, your mother won the house in the divorce and left it to you. That means that, legally, it is yours to do with what you want. And, let's face it, you grew up in that house as well. I think, reasonably, even if they had treated you and your mother well, they could expect you to sell it to them, not to just sign it over to them for free. So, hold firm. And, let's face it, no matter what you did, they would call you the asshole, even if you signed the house over to them and gave them all your money. There is nothing you can do to win with them, do don't even try. Not the asshole. If you and or Angel don't have an interest in living in the house, offer to sell it to them, at market value. If you and or Angel are interested in keeping the house, fuck them. Not the asshole. You have that house because your mother negotiated for it in a divorce. You have no idea what she gave up and or didn't get in trade for the house, but most states are no fault, and it's unlikely your stepdad was being unfairly treated. Your step-siblings hate you, hate your sister, hated your mother, even though she took their father in when he was sick after the divorce, which she did not have to do, and is probably why he was more generous in his will with her than they expected. None of this happened because of you. You would be honoring the wishes of both of your parents if you keep the house, or the value of the house, for yourself. All of this sounds made up. I am sure you wish it was all true though winking face. Am I the asshole for revealing to my friend's fiancé that she has been married twice before? My, 42 male, friend, 42 female, of many years, who I am going to call, Pam, here, has been engaged since this spring. Planning on a Christmas wedding. 
Until recently, I only met the guy. Let's call him, Pete. Fairly briefly at a couple of social events and didn't know him that well. Last month, Pam invited me and a couple other friends, Paul, and, Paulina, out drinking to get to know Pete. There was no discussion of off-limits topics beforehand. No mention that anything at all was being kept secret from Pete. Now, Pam does have a history of being a somewhat private and secretive person, with a very compartmentalized life, so this night out with her fiancé did come as a surprise to us. Still, there was no briefing on things not to mention. We were drinking, we were laughing, we were having a great time. Also, did I mention we were drinking? At one point, Pam gets up to go to the bar, and I say to Pete, you're so much chiller and funner than Dave. He just looks confused and says, Dave? And without thinking why he would ask, my drunk ass goes, her last husband, the dud. It never occurred to me he wouldn't already know. To which he replies, she was married. What do you mean her last husband? The speakers in the bar were blaring, but you could feel a bubble of silence forming around us. Time slowed down. And then Paulina, ever so helpful, blurts out, he didn't matter, they were only married a few months. Her first one lasted eight years. Pete looks at me and asks, is that true? I say, yes. He gets up, drops some cash on the table, and leaves. Pam comes back and asks what's going on and all I can think to say was, uh, apparently Pete didn't know about Dave or Michael. Her face goes paper white, and she follows Pete outside. That was three weeks ago today, and the last I saw of her. She's not answering my calls or texts, and she's also cut off Paul and Paulina, even though Paul was pretty much drunk under the table. Pam doesn't do social media, but the three of us have learned from other friends that invitations have gone out, so they've patched up any disagreement that might have occurred from the revelation. Paulina thinks that in hindsight, we should have known that's exactly the sort of thing Pam would hide from a fiancé. That does have a ring of truth to it knowing Pam. She's always been very judicious about what she reveals about herself, and when and to whom she reveals it. Perhaps I should have considered everything I know about her to be a secret. At the same time, I really don't feel like I did anything wrong, and that she should have mentioned it if she hadn't told him yet. Ex-spouses are something you mention before the engagement, not after the honeymoon. She definitely should not have had a group of people who know a secret heavily drinking around the person she's keeping the secret from. Not the asshole. She didn't tell you to keep it a secret, and in my opinion that's the kind of thing you shouldn't hide from someone you're planning to marry. Not the asshole. You've done nothing wrong here at all. She should have told you not to say anything if that was what she wanted. Not on you for not reading her mind. Not the asshole. It would have been outed nearer the time as she would have had to provide her divorce papers when doing the legal side of things. Kinda a big thing to have not told him before they started planning a life together. Don't sweat it up. Esh. She for not disclosing the information to him prior to discussing marriage with him. You are absolutely ta. You never tell a friend's fiancé that they're better than an ex. Never. It's very crass and I kind of think you knew that. Not the asshole. This is public knowledge. Am I the asshole for switching to regular milk to prove my lactose intolerant roommate keeps stealing from me? Me, 24F, and two other girls share an apartment together and we split all the bills. The only thing we don't split costs on is groceries. Everyone's in charge of buying their own food and we don't touch whatever doesn't belong to us in the fridge. We put our names on everything so no one gets mixed up. This issue has been going on almost a year and I'm sick of it. One of my roommates, let's just call her Stacy, for being a B, keeps stealing my food. I get home from work and containers with my leftovers are sometimes missing. They have my name written on it, or my stuff finishes too quick. My gallon of milk for example. I buy almond milk because I like the taste. But it seems to finish after a week even though I've only drank from it once or twice. I confronted Stacy about this lots of times and that's caused a lot of arguments. She outright denies it and tells me I'm crazy even though it's so obvious. My other roommate and I carpool together because we both work the same early morning shifts around the same area so I know it's definitely not her. It's always after we get back home and Stacy's already left for work that I notice my food's gone. My roommates also had a similar problem but not as often as I do. I'm guessing cause Stacy doesn't like what she buys. The funny thing is Stacy buys a lot for herself and is even more stingy about her food. She will literally point out what's hers when she comes back from grocery shopping and tells us not to touch it. Last week, my milk was nearly empty again and I got fed up. I went to the liquor store and bought regular dairy milk. 
I drank what was left of my almond milk and refilled the gallon with the one I bought. This was to catch, prove Stacy is the one stealing since she's lactose intolerant. The next day, Saturday, we get back from work and Stacy is pissed. She yelled at me that she was stuck in the bathroom for 40 minutes with diarrhea because of my milk, she was using it to make a shake. I only responded with, so then you're the one who's been stealing. Stacy freaking exploded. Yeah she admitted she was, sometimes, drinking my milk and eating my food but she was more mad that I switched milks than the fact that she was caught. I told her I wouldn't have done that if she just stopped taking my stuff from the fridge or at least told the truth instead of trying to make it seem like I was making it up. My other roommate backed me up and thought it was kinda funny she got payback for stealing from us. It's a little tense right now and my other roommate told me Stacy is trying to convince her to agree to kick me out. Little does she know we're both looking to move somewhere else together cause we are sick of her shit. I was talking to some of my girlfriends what happened and a few think I was an asshole for that, like what? I feel like I'm not in the wrong here. Stacy was the one taking my food and not even owning up to it and I wanted to prove it, does that make me ta? Not the asshole. Laxatives. Use laxatives. Not the asshole and lol she deserved it. She wasn't even sorry for stealing. Now that is some entitlement right there. Not the asshole and tell her, not only will your milk be regular from now on, but you will be leaving little surprises in your leftovers and only you will know what and when. So, unless she wants to spend her days on the toilet, she needs to stop her thieving ways immediately. It doesn't even matter if you do or don't. But an open box of X lax with a few of them missing is a good warning. Not the asshole. Not the asshole. Karma. Am I the asshole for letting my friend struggle with her newborn baby? I, F, 31, have a friend, 32. Let's call her Laura. We've been friends since elementary school, but our relationship had a few rough patches. We're close, but she can be a little self-centered and callous. I know it's rooted in childhood trauma and it's not intentional. She suffers the most from constantly driving people away, but sometimes it's still hard to stay by her side. Laura had a one-night stand, and got pregnant. I told her it would be irresponsible to be a single mom when she can barely support herself, but she's decided to keep it anyway, so now she has a two-month-old daughter, Mia. She had to quit her job halfway through the pregnancy, because it was harder than expected, and obviously can't go back in the near future. She's also depleted her savings and now her only income is childcare benefit and monthly allowance from her parents until she can get a job, but it's not enough to cover her expenses. Last week she came up with the idea that they could move into my guest room. She thinks it'd be perfect, because I own the apartment so there's no rent, we can split bills and groceries, I can watch the baby when Laura's tired and she can help out with chores while I'm working. I said no, and couldn't even explain why, because she immediately started screaming about how I'm a selfish, heartless awe. How can I be so cruel and cold, and that I don't understand what she's going through. I tried to tell her to move back home because I know Laura's mom already offered it, but she called me a nasshole again, because as a mother she can't live with her parents. Even though she can be a bit entitled, it's never been this bad, so her behavior came as a surprise. I gave her a few days to calm down, then I called to explain that while I love them both, I can't take them in. I've already helped Laura buy newborn essentials, and I told her I can help cleaning or cooking, so she can have some rest, but I can't do anything more. I've recently been diagnosed with panic disorder, I'm at the end of my rope and I'm clearly not in the mental or emotional state to basically adopt a family. She started crying and said that she's disappointed in me, because I have no idea what it means to be a mother, and I don't even try to understand her situation. Then she told me she's not sure anymore if they even need me in their life. I feel guilty and terrible for not being able to do more for them, especially for Mia who doesn't deserve to grow up like this, and I know Laura needs help because being a single mother is terrifying, but I can't do more. I can't do more. She says a real friend wouldn't put herself first, but if I don't put myself first now, I'm not sure I'll ever be able to recover from this disorder. But maybe she's right, and I'm just being a selfish asshole now. Am I the asshole? Not the asshole. Honey. Laura wants to move in with you instead of her parents because she knows her parents won't let her foist all responsibility for the baby off on them. Asking. Then tantruming didn't work so now she's going for emotional manipulation with tears and threats to cut you off. Call her bluff and let her. Guarantee she'll be back when she realizes no sane person without a sunk cost fallacy will put up with her. In the meantime, think about what you put into this friendship versus what you gain. 
I suspect there is a huge imbalance. If you think she is struggling emotionally, practically, contact her parents maybe. Not the asshole. She wants you to provide free housing and childcare and is planning to give nothing in return. Splitting the bills maybe saves a couple of bucks but splitting the groceries could mean that you would pay more than you eat. Also she has an opportunity to move to her parents. Not the asshole. What many first-time parents don't realize is, taking care of a newborn can be much more difficult, time-consuming, exhausting, and frustrating than they could have ever imagined. And while it's okay to ask for help, it's not okay to expect someone else to take on their parental responsibilities. It was inappropriate for her to suggest the arrangement in the first place and completely out of line for her to get upset with you for saying no. She has help, her parents. She doesn't want to accept it for whatever reasons. And that's not on you. Good on you for creating healthy boundaries. You still care for your friend and are willing to support her. But you're not willing to step in and be the parent. Edit. Grammar. Why not require the deadbeat dad to pay? Not the asshole. She wants to move in with you rent-free and use you as free childcare. She's taking the piss. Her mom has offered. You aren't leaving her in a problematic situation she's choosing to put herself in one.